Hello and welcome to France 24's Culture Show. I'm Marjorie Hash and in this edition I have the pleasure of welcoming in our studio a South African choreographer whose dance moves have been performed across the world. <laughs> Not only has he produced a body of work with the aim of redefining the African black body while incorporating traditional dance, he's opened his own dance school, was head choreographer at the 2010 Football World Cup and even worked with a certain Idris Elba on a dance routine. Thank you very much, uh, Gregory and Makoma, for being with us here in the studio. It's a pleasure. It, Thank you for having me. Well, you're not here for just any old reason. You're in Paris at the minute because you've got your latest show, which is called Broken Chord, and it's the story of an African, South African choir who travelled at the end of the 19th century all the way up to the UK, but also to the US, to perform with the aim of making money to create a school back in South Africa. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this story and what drew you to it? Well, I think it's an extraordinary story of this South African choir that travelled from South Africa by boat in 1891 to arrive in the UK to so much of the experience of, um, you know, racial um, connotations that were thrown to them. And I think, you know, I was thinking so much about the now, how we are still experiencing racism in, this, in the world and how we can continue to have a discourse around racism because it's something that we always want to throw under the carpet, um, particularly in, in, in spaces where we feel that there is a lot of pressure mm -hmm. for us to be speaking about racism. So this work really does speak about racism, does speak about migration, does speak about displacement. Well, let's take a little look. A glimpse of Broken Chord, a show that has been choreographed by Gregory Makoma and that you can see at Paris's Cité de la Musique this weekend. Uh, what's really interesting as well about this is that the um, band, the choir, performed in front of Queen Victoria, who was at the helm of the British Empire. Yeah. Um, and the story also has quite a sad ending. You know? Well, I mean, you know, if you're thinking about it, that the British are the colonizer of our own country in South Africa. We're still living by British laws, by the way, mm. even, you know, 29 years after our own democracy. Those laws are very much in, in, ingrained in our, in our veins, in our DNA, and they somehow they determine our faith. They determine how we're moving forward as navigating this democracy, and which has been really something tough for us to navigate. Um, but really, the, the, the truth in this is that we continue to to travel the world, and um, as the choir did, they they, they travel from South Africa mm -hmm. to to get to to the UK, um, and for them it was not just about getting to the UK to perform for the Queen. Mm -hmm. It was for them to share part of our country, part of our history. Mm -hmm. And given that these were intellectuals, by the way, you know, they were educated by missionaries, but um, to be to find that kind of hostility mm -hmm. when arriving in the UK was something of a shock, a yeah. trauma. Yeah, trying to fit in and being preached certain things that didn't apply when they went back to the the mother empire, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, myself and Tutu Gassibis, who's the, who's the um, uh, composer of the show, we were very much aware of what is going on in the world today and we wanted to to be to be the ones who are are the voice of um you know the, the choir members of that time who were not maybe able to 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 speak up for themselves mm -hmm. at that particular time but then there's there are accounts of um interviews that they were able to somehow uh, raise those issues um somehow they, they were being shut down and um they were left broke yeah, you know, they want to find themselves um, uh, to find a way for them to get back home yeah. without any money that 
that they were intended to raise. Yeah, well, I found another interesting parallel between your life and the, the, the story of the squires, that they were trying to, as you said, raise money uh, to build a school. But you yourself, in 1999, uh, created the uh, Vujani Dance Theatre. Um, how, how's it doing and what spurred that desire at the time? Well, um, I think Vujani Dance Theatre is a, is a legacy project. And I wanted, when I created it in 1999, I was a student at Parts mm -hmm. in Brussels, at Performing Arts Research and Training Studios. And I wanted to create a space that a black uh, a child can see themselves in, you know, as a, as a dancer, for those dreams to be realized. Mm -hmm. It became a playground for me, for artistic um, 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 a manifestation of the things that I was wanted to explore in the world. And, and dance became an escape for me for that trauma that I grew up knowing, growing up in Soweto next to a hostel which housed migrant workers who were coming from different parts of South Africa. And in the streets, I was confronted by the dust and the smoke that was emanating from the burning tires because it was in the middle of a lot of chaos in our mm -hmm. country, in the heart of apartheid South Africa. So, so all of those things have become part of the, the aesthetic of my work. Um, mm -hmm. No work of mine goes without a hint of smoke, mm -hmm. <laughs> a hint of dust, because those are the things of, I, I've, I've, I've continued to experience. And, and we need to continue to amplify the message of humanity. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, the, the, those migrant workers that were your neighbours. They, you saw them uh, have dance off, and they inspired you dancing off as well in terms of dancing. But also, other extreme superstardom, pop star Michael Jackson was your yeah. other source of inspiration. What was it like for you under apartheid, seeing this this pop star? Sure. I mean, I think those two extremities, I think in, in themselves, they make you know the body of my work. Um, being exposed to migrant workers who were coming from different parts of Southern Africa and over the weekends they will perform their traditional forms. And on, at home, on, we had a small television screen, a black and white one at a time, and Michael Jackson appeared and mm. he could do small gestures that moved people to tears. Mm -hmm. And I started merging the two, what I was seeing that was very immediate and to something that I aspired to, you know, the yeah. pop culture, the yeah. Michael Jackson. And, and, and that was the beginning of creating this fusion, this aesthetic that, um, yeah, I call it a cocktail that keeps you sober, uh, <laughs> but takes you on, an, on, on a roller coaster of emotions. No, well, it's a fantastic cocktail to have within oneself. Um, I also uh, like your relationship with France. It's been quite a close one. You've worked with Lyon. You're even, you've even been awarded uh, the Chevalier des Arts et des Lettres, which is a very uh, prestigious uh, arts award here in France. And um, uh, well, I think you must know that the Paris Opera has just named its first a black star uh, dancer, Guillaume Diop. Had you heard about him? I have. I have. And I followed that story because it's one of those um, stories that, you know, it's about time. Mm -hmm. um, and talent is talent, you know. Um, we we've often look look away from talent over, you know, a skin color. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this for me is reaffirming that we are somehow, the world somehow is moving in the right direction. And because we've got to acknowledge the wrongs we have got to acknowledge the past. You know, history cannot be denied, mm. but we can forge forward with more positivity. Yeah, well, here's what uh, Guillaume Diop had to say about his appointment. I definitely feel a lot of responsibility because I'm realizing what it represents, not just for me, but also for people who look like me. I'm aware that if I had a role model who looked like me when I started dancing, things would have been much easier. There were black dancers at the Paris Opera, but never in a starring role. So I'm aware of the responsibility I have. Well, that was Guillaume Diop on France 24 earlier. Now, Gregory, who are the rising stars that you've got an eye on in terms of music and dancing? Sure. I mean, I think in, in, in the dance circle, there's so many people that are coming out. There's one choreographer, dancer, who's really been making huge strands in, in the UK. His name is um, um, Tutu Zelim. Um, um, oh, God, I forgot his name now. But he's, he's one of those amazing people who are, um, every time he puts a work, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, yeah, there's hope 
in the future because we have really um, young people who are making mm -hmm. um, incredible strengths in, 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 the dance, in the dance space. Oh, I feel like we could talk for hours so much to, to dissect and really interesting conversation, but I'm afraid the culture show is coming to a close for this edition, but of course we've got time to, to, to talk about maybe one of your uh, favourite um, exhibitions of the moment, and it's one that's taking place by South African artists here in Paris. Can you tell us a little bit more? Sure, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's an exhibition by Zanele Moholi, mm -hmm. who is one of my favourite artists, a photographer, mm -hmm. who has put up an exhibition. Again, it looks at the black body. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Zanele, you know, they much about you know the the extraordinary tale of of women the minority in in our in the world mm -hmm. people who suffer the gays who suffer against mm -hmm. prejudice so she's put up this amazing exhibition mm -hmm. well, that at, at the map at the map but definitely go and uh, check it out and also if you are in paris this weekend check out gregory's latest show which is a fantastic tale of travel from south africa at the end of the 19th century thank you so much for being with us france we for the latest news bulletin is coming up in just a few minutes but we're going to play out with some footage of your coup de coeur your exhibition just to Welcome to this special history episode of French Connections Plus. In today's show, we're going to deep dive into what was dubbed La Belle Époque, the beautiful era, a period straddling the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th. It was a time of peace and prosperity, of technological progress, bubbling creativity, and hope for the future. It was also a moment of deep societal change that really set the foundations of modern day France. Join us as we time travel back to La Belle Époque. French Connections Plus, presented by Jeannie Godula and Florence Villemineau.